In 2020, pandemonium struck and one healthcare story dominated the news. It was the single biggest story in every country in the world every single day for the entire year. But while the mass hysteria had just started gripping the planet, Egypt had an extra special story of its own. In a village some 240 kilometers south of the capital, around mid-February, Egypt marked a major milestone. Its 100 millionth citizen was born. The birth of that citizen, whom officials identified as a girl named Yasmin Rabi, was marked in Cairo by a giant counter outside the country's national statistics agency that had been ticking upwards for years. The news was exciting, but it also came in a bag of mixed feelings. You see, for a country whose consecutive governments, including the current one, have described the country's population growth as a threat to national security, on par with terrorism, there is growing concern that its exploding population will precipitate a population crisis, worsen poverty, and contribute to the scarcity of basic resources like land and water. However, Egypt is not a small land-sized country, and the nation itself, on paper at least, is not so bad. It is actually one of the wealthiest nations in all of Africa, trading back and forth quite frequently with South Africa as the second biggest economy on the continent after Nigeria. But all of this starts to fall apart when you look at the country's population density. If you look at any satellite image of the country at night, you'll see a flower-like line of lights stretching from south to north where they fan out before reaching the Mediterranean Sea. The rest of the country is practically dark, empty and desolate. This is because more than 90% of Egypt is empty, which says a lot of the country's population crisis being amplified by its unforgiving geography. 95% of all Egyptians occupy less than 5% of the country's total area. The other 5% of the population, mostly nomadic herders, are spread across the other 95% of its area, which basically forms part of the massive and inhospitable Sahara Desert, a barren wasteland which is one of the most hostile human locations to human life found anywhere on the planet. This means that a staggering 95 million people are heavily concentrated on this very narrow strip of land on both sides of the Nile River known as the Nile Valley, leaving vast areas of land that are mostly unhabitable, underpopulated and underdeveloped. The intense heat, intense isolation and incredibly difficult terrain of the desert makes it that from space, the contrast between the Nile's lush green riverbanks and the barren desert through which it flows is obvious. This green belt, in total roughly half the size of Ireland, follows the Nile as it snakes through the desert then spreads out into the lush Nile Delta, precipitating one of the highest population densities in the world in excess of 2,000 people per square kilometer or 5,000 persons per square mile in a number of riverine cities. Simply put, without the Nile, there is no Egypt. It's understandable that despite a 1 million square kilometer land size, the soaring demand for people to be close to the Nile eventually led to vast population increases that in turn increased the strain on available fertile land which pushed the limits of Egypt's ecological carrying capacity in the desert, leading to a fragile and delicate balance that exists between the high number of people and the harsh surrounding environment. You see, the Nile, one of Egypt's principal assets, is the primary source of fresh water which makes it absolutely critical for life here. It is so long its entire span is longer than the distance between London and New York. Without it, ancient Egyptians would likely never have amassed the wealth and power needed to build pyramids and control vast territories starting more than 5,000 years ago. The peculiar geographical distribution of Egypt's population has existed for thousands of years and it's a principal reason for problems in the allocation of resources, availability of services and quality of life. 
This reality exacerbates the challenges of overcrowding, congestion, traffic jams, deteriorating public services and high environmental pollution in Egypt's major cities, especially the capital Cairo. Moving around major cities in Egypt is a nightmare for drivers. Even at the pyramids of Giza, houses, hotels and golf courses are pushing in from all sides, leaving tourists with just one direction for photographs with a desert backdrop. The metropolitan area known as Greater Cairo, which also includes parts of Giza and Kalyubia governorates, is currently home to around 22.8 million inhabitants as the city buckles under the weight of people competing for space. Only Tokyo, New Delhi, Seoul, Shanghai, Greater New York and Lagos have more people, but with much more rain and no encroaching desert around them. So these are the punishing cards Egypt was dealt. A rapidly expanding population, a country of more than 1 million square kilometers, but only 50,000 square kilometers of it can support human life. In addition, fertility rates have risen since 2008 to 3.5 children per woman, according to the United Nations, and the population is growing at 1.8% annually, a rate that in Egypt's crowded cities and towns adds 1 million people every six months. Since Hosni Mubarak's administration, extensive media campaigns, especially on television, using popular actors, actresses and singers, were launched to alter Egyptian people's attitudes on big families. But despite these undertakings, the children kept coming thick and fast. When Mubarak assumed office in 1981, following President Anwar Sadat's assassination, Egypt's population was estimated at around 44.5 million. When he was ousted from office in 2011, the country's population had increased to nearly 84 million, an average increase of about 1.3 million people per year, despite all of these government efforts. Under the current administration of President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi, the government portrays the two-child family as an ideal family size. But this policy clashes with the predominant values in a conservative rural culture that emphasize large families as a source of status and authority. Some large developing countries with soaring populations have managed to get the problem under control. For instance, Vietnam where the population grew to 97 million in 2018 from 60 million in 1986, has reduced the rate of increase to 1%. Bangladesh, which has a population of more than 160 million, has done the same. In Egypt, though, the rate of growth is nearly twice as high, at 1.79%. What's worse, upstream on the Nile, Ethiopia's construction of a colossal $4 billion dam, Africa's largest, with a reservoir about the size of London, is tiring fears of a devastating water crisis and a threat to food security, stoking patriotism, deep-seated concerns of drought, and even murmurs of war between Egypt and Ethiopia. This definitely poses a serious existential threat for the Egyptian state to cope with. This green Y-shaped pattern of human occupation has characterized Egypt for thousands of years, but in the 1970s, as even more precious green land was gobbled up by urban growth, an idea that had been taking shape in the national consciousness for decades was finally put into policy. The country of pharaohs put in place plans to conquer the desert and redistribute its growing population growth across the white sands of the Sahara, an Egyptian version of the U.S. manifest destiny to move and expand west, no matter how punishing the consequences. With Cairo growing beyond its initial boundaries and spilled into the desert, plans were drawn up for satellite cities to take the strain. After many failed attempts, the 10th of Ramadan, a blue-collar industrial city, was the first experimental new city to take shape in the 1970s. Currently, 650,000 residents live here, but the target is 2.1 million by 2023. However, housing is unapologetically bare, apart from the graffiti that covers many ground floor facades. Most public squares and playgrounds are dusty brown. 
From an ecological standpoint, desert cities have obvious challenges and the 10th of Ramadan is no exception. Later, new cities such as Sheikh Zayed turned away from these working class routes to become gated communities for the privileged. Luxury housing accommodates 71% of the city's residents, while low-income housing accounts for just 15%. There are golf courses, swimming pools, and man-made lakes which must be regularly refilled due to evaporation. The majority of housing here is, however, too expensive for most Egyptians, and like the 10th of Ramadan, it has struggled to attract new people. Today, there are 22 built or part-built Egyptian new cities and the new urban communities authority has plans for 19 more. Around 7 million people now call these new cities home. It is arguably the most ambitious new cities program the world has ever seen. In 2020, the government announced an additional 20 new cities to house 30 million residents and be spread throughout the country. Among them is a new administrative capital, the much talked about Waydan City, for 15 million people to be built east of Cairo. I'm sure you might have already seen a lot of videos on this one. Currently, Egypt's population is 106 million, the 14th largest in the world, and it is projected to reach 128 million by the year 2030. There you go guys, our desire to inspire a passion for learning about Africa runs deep. If you'd like to support the channel to continue producing more high quality content on a regular basis, please head over to patreon.com slash reasonafrica. That's patreon.com slash reasonafrica. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.